Hi, I'm Tom, the founder of BTEX. Welcome back to this full review of the Xperia 5 Mark II. We're so fired up about this phone. But before I get into it, I want you to imagine with me that you are in the meeting room, presumably in Tokyo, Japan, when they're, you know, they're going through the Xperia Top Brass, all of the features they want to pack into this compact device. And it's just good news after good news after good news. There is so much to love about this phone. And then someone, I don't know who, in this meeting must have said, hey, I know, let's put in a dedicated Google Assistant button. Let's put it between the camera shutter button and the power button so it's right in the way. Let's make sure you can't turn it off or reassign it. What do you reckon? And someone said yes. So before I get into this, make sure you're subbed and that you smash the notification bell because we've got Xperia videos coming up against the new iPhones, which I'm excited about, um, and loads of other stuff. And Jordan, of course, um, who's doing some great videos uh, over in the UK. I remember that place. Now look, let's get into the design first and build quality, that sort of stuff. Everything feels absolutely solid, uh, as you would expect. This is a Sony product, after all. It's smaller, of course, more compact than the Xperia 1 Mark II, but it's got the same uh, magic to it, that same beautiful lightness. Uh, it's a fingerprint magnet too, just like the Xperia 1 Mark II. It doesn't bother me too much because you're gonna stick a case on this, I expect. Um, but what I will say though is you really do wanna stick a case on this one because it's lighter and smaller than the Xperia 1 Mark II. This thing's been slipping out of our pockets. It's, I mean, it's nearly come a cropper quite a few times. So you'll definitely want to get a case for it. So unsurprisingly, it feels super premium. Uh, let's talk about the audio here because even though it's a smaller phone, you do have dual front facing stereo speakers. A very, very similar arrangement, of course, to the Xperia 1 Mark II, and the results are the same. And what I mean by that is it's a very detailed, balanced, nuanced sound but is by no means the loudest. Even when you turn on Dolby Atmos, which you need to do because it sounds better and a lot louder if you do that, um, it's still nowhere near as loud as the com uh, competition. Does that worry me? No, not in the slightest, because it's not all about, you know, oomph, it's about the way that the sound is delivered. So I just want to briefly come back to the Google Assistant button because it is here and it is in the way. Um, we did find that we triggered it a few times accidentally and it's really annoying when it happens. What's most annoying of all, apart from the fact that it's there, when it doesn't need to be, um, because like, really what's the point? If you want to call up the big G, we know what the wake uh, words are. We, we can do that easily. Even on the software there on the screen, we can do it. It doesn't need its own button. Even Google's own hardware doesn't do this now with the um, the latest Pixel 5. It's a complete mystery to me as to why they've done this. Anyway, um, but it is there, so we have to flag that. We also find that um, it gets in the way when you use uh, a tripod and you know the clamp there. It, it's just annoying. Anyway, I promise not to mention it until the very end. All right, let's move on. <laughs> anyway, what do I also love here, just to kind of bring things back up? Well, the notification light, I love that. I wish my, more phones had it, as I've said before. The fingerprint scanner is super fast. I love the way it falls on, on the phone there. When you use it to unlock, it's just super quick. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, really beautiful, pocketable, lovely looking phone uh, so far. It's all good, all good, except for the thing that, you know, let's not go there again. Let's talk about the display. Uh, again, look, Sony is famous for beautiful, beautiful displays, and this is no exception. Full HD+, plus, not 4K, you have to make a decision, don't you, at this point, maybe in the future things will change. Do you want 4K or do you want the higher refresh rate? Well, here we have the higher refresh rate and because the screen is smaller, you absolutely get away with that, no issues whatsoever. And I love the fact that the refresh rate is so high. It makes swishing about on this thing absolutely, it feels so um, luxurious, I think is probably the word. It's just a really enjoyable phone to use on the daily because of that high refresh rate. So things are looking good there. It's worth mentioning that unlike other manufacturers, uh, this is locked at 120 hertz, but you can lower it manually if you, you know, really want to do that. It, I mean, I don't think you have to because battery life, which we'll come on to later, is really, really healthy on this. You'll get through a day, no problem whatsoever. Um, but you know, it's locked in there at 120 hertz, and I, I like that. I mean, it's just great. 
Um, what else do I like here? The 21 by 9 aspect ratio. I've said this before with Sony Xperia phones. I love it. It looks really, really good. Colors are really accurate. Uh, Sony's creator mode gives you full control over that anyway. Um, it's a very, very good looking display. Let's talk about something that's a little bit of a negative. Um, for me, and I said this before in my Xperia 1 Mark II uh, review, it's the very, it's, it's acceptable outdoors, but it's at the minimum level of acceptable when it comes to really bright conditions. So um, it could be brighter. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to say I do want Sony to make devices brighter in future. Just a bit would really help. So, so far, so good. Now let's talk about the camera tech. The only uh, thing you'll notice missing here from the hardware side of things is the time of flight sensor. If you look over here on the back, we've got that beautiful triple camera setup, 12 megapixels across the board. Very reminiscent, of course, of the Xperia 1 Mark II. And as with the 1 Mark II, this is all about getting into pro mode. If you're the sort of person who will enjoy that, you don't have to be a pro. I'm not a pro but I've really enjoyed it so much, way more than I ever thought I would. So if you think you want to get into these shots and just tune them to perfection, and of course shooting raw, oh, hello. Shooting raw is what this phone is all about as well. All three cameras shoot raw, so I mean, there is that. And if, if you want to buy this T-shirt, you can do that. And if you do that, you're supporting us here at VTech. So take a look at these pictures here that we've taken. Um, as we expected um, images are sharp. Um, the macro mode felt like it had been improved compared to the Xperia 1 Mark II. Uh, obviously, I know it's subjective, so I don't want to give you too much of my opinion or our opinion here at Team BTEC. I want to know what you think. Um, basically, the colors are very natural. Sony's color science is super. I mean, this is very, very impressive stuff. As long as you're not one of those people who wants that kind of dare I say Samsung or Pixel approach which is more vivid not as uh, true to life but but really kind of um, vivid as you like and in your face this is a very different more natural approach uh, I will say though as I said with the Xperia 1 Mark II I wish auto mode was better I do think it's possible to give us all of this Sony uh, alpha magic that we have here in the pro modes that's wonderful but also to give us a better performing uh, automatic mode especially in low light or challenging light uh, conditions. It can be done, uh, and I would like to see that happen in the future. I think that's a fair point. So what else is worth mentioning here on the camera side of things? Well, um, it would be nice to see HDR in um, auto mode. I mean, it, it should be there, I think. Um, I also think that it would be nice, I mean, Jordan picked up on this as well. It would be nice to potentially have all of this available in the one app so you can go into pro mode from within the app rather than having three separate apps for pro and you know, on the video side of things the camera side of things and then the auto mode that would streamline the process a bit more and perhaps encourage more people you know to get into the pro modes but actually for me the star of the show here when it comes to the video it's nice to see sony returning to being the kings of slow motion here on phones again and they are without a shadow of a doubt. 4K, 120 frames per second. This is stunning. I just, this is what we like to see, isn't it? Sony doing what they do best and just nailing the execution. And here they have. Let's talk about the software. So uh, the UI here is, this is typical modern Sony Xperia. It's very, very stock Android, Android 10 of course, but with that sprinkling of Sony magic, just like you get on the Xperia 1 Mark II. Um, Personally, I love it. It's the little things like the attention to detail. It's a cleaner look. Um, even the sounds I really like. It's, it's a really great phone to use this on the daily. I think anyone would enjoy it. I think um, attention to detail could almost be like its own sort of chapter here when we talk about Sony phones because it's often the sort of non-headline grabbing little details that make all the difference when it comes to living with the phone uh, for a long period of time. For example, the way they look after the batteries. In fact, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to come on to the uh, battery uh, tech in a minute. But, you know, this is a very um, thoughtfully put together device. And that really shows in the software. However, this is not cool. Bloatware, we talked about this when I gave my L4 review just the other day. Um, 
I don't like bloatware. I don't think anyone does. It shouldn't be here, especially not on a device costing this much. I made a note um, of what you can expect to find here and not be able to get rid of. Uh, Call of Duty, fine if you're a gamer, and of course, chances are you, you may well be. I mean, I'm not really very good at gaming. I don't really do it very much. Um, but Call of Duty's there, Netflix, Facebook, LinkedIn, Booking.com, three months of Tidal, uh, free, Amazon Shopping, Prime Video, PlayStation app, Sony News, AccuWeather. Okay, we've got to just keep an eye on that, haven't we? Because that is going to upset some people. So look, let's talk about performance. It is um, a Snapdragon 865 um, processor here. It's not the 865 Plus. Uh, does that worry me? No, it's absolutely, with eight gigs around, I mean this, you can jump in and out of as many apps as you want. It's very, very, very difficult to slow this down. You can't really, unless you're actively trying to. I mean, I use my phone for work uh, and I need a powerhouse uh, for, you know, power users. I suppose I'm a power user. Um, this will do the job. It's a smaller device than the Xperia 1 Mark II, of course, but it really does pack the same punch, which is extremely important. Overall, I would say the performance is roughly the same as the Xperia 1 Mark II, but the difference is it actually feels more powerful. And I was trying to work out why is that, because it's actually not quicker or more powerful. And what it is, of course, is that 120 hertz refresh rate, and that's why it feels even zippier. I mean, this, this is, again, very, very, very solid in, uh, in the performance department. Um, if you're looking for a flagship, then they're all going to feel roughly the same with the 865 or 865 Plus process. so, uh, processors. So I, again, as I said before, don't let the fact that it hasn't got the Plus put you off in any way, shape or form. This is a sort of a mixed bag. We don't have wireless charging. And we're going to do a whole separate video comparing the 5 Mark II and the 1 Mark II, which does have wireless charging. Make sure you're subbed for that and smash the notification bell. Um, I'm not worried about that. It worries some people more than others. I think if you've already invested in all the hardware to just charge wirelessly and you can't now use it with this device, I can understand if that annoyed you. Charging it up actually isn't the fastest thing. It's up to 21 watts, but in the box, it's just a, an 18 watt charger. Um, that means it feels a little bit slower than the competition. Well, it is a little bit slower than the competition. Um, there is a battery life hit on the 120 hertz uh, screen. We managed to eke out a few more hours of use when this was reduced to 60 hertz, but I still wouldn't recommend doing that because it is enough to get you through the day. It just depends. I mean, my goodness, you'd have to be a serious power user to have this run out before the end of the day. But uh, you can get a few more hours if you want to reduce it. I wouldn't bother. Bottom line then, when it comes to the battery, 4,000 milliamp hours for a phone this size. I mean, it's, you couldn't really ask for much more. I'm very, very happy. Now let's move on to the price and I want to give you my verdict on this phone. Uh, we are going to do a separate video by the way where we um, look at all of the uh, questions you've given us and we try and answer every single one of them. But right now this is just my or Team BTEX verdict on uh, what we think about this device. Starting with the price. In the UK, $799, uh, actually over $900 in the States, uh, $799 British pounds by the way obviously in the UK. Um, is Sony asking a lot for this? I think you have to remember something here with Sony phones. As with anything in life, whether it's watches or cars or whatever, any product, if it's more exclusive, you're going to pay a bit more. That's just economics and the way things are. Um, it's the same here with these Xperia phones, especially with the 5 Mark II. It's a unique device and it's for someone who's really into getting into pro mode and someone who enjoys the art of photography and videography. And this is a celebration, I think, of all the things that Sony does well. There's Bravia magic here. Um, there's uh, PlayStation magic here. The, the Xperia experience, didn't think I'd be saying those two words so closely together, uh, is really enjoyable. And I think most people will get a kick out of this phone if you're not hooked and totally reliant on automatic mode when it comes to taking your own pictures. Um, at this price point though, what I'm worried about from Sony's side of things here is that a lot of people are going to be swayed, if they're open to um, iOS, to potentially the new um, iPhone 12 series, which we're going to be reviewing in detail of course. Um, but on the Android side of things, I think this was always going to be a niche device, um, but it's a really enjoyable niche device to own on the daily. This is definitely, as far as I'm concerned, uh, 
It's a five-star device. It is absolutely as much fun and as much enjoyment and as dependable and powerful and reliable as its bigger brother, the uh, One Mark II, but just in a smaller form factor. A couple of trade-offs, a little bit of a sacrifice here and there, but overall, it's a massive, massive win. And literally, the worst thing about this phone is the Google Assistant button. Come on, guys. I, I still can't quite believe that I'm, I'm even saying this, but yeah, let's see if we can persuade Sony to, um, I'm gonna put a comment um, in the comments section below and pin it. Let's ask Sony respectfully to consider doing away with that when they bring out the 5 Mark III or the One Mark III. And actually, yeah, there's a lot to be excited about. The Xperia Pro, of course, there's some cool stuff ar around. Um, let's keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.